Hello and welcome to this long overdue fifth video in the Campaigner Easter shoot series. Now I am well aware it is now well on the way through May and all I can do is apologise. This was meant to all be delivered right the way throughout the Easter period but just sadly the way things have gone it just meant that I would I had a rather lack of time to finish so please excuse me but however I do not feel that this is something that's not worthwhile covering because to be honest the Easter message is the most relevant message that the church has today it is the very basis of the Christian uh, religion it's the very heart of Christianity because without Jesus on the cross there is no Christianity so that's what we're going to look at today. Not necessarily a very easy topic or one that we like to think about too much. However, it's one that's most certainly necessary. Now, so the reading we're going to take today is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 32 to 61. And the reading, as with all of these, is from the International Children's Bible. Jesus is killed on a cross. The soldiers were going out of the city with Jesus. They forced another man to carry the cross to be used for Jesus. This man was Simon from Cyrene. They all came to the place called Golgotha. Golgotha means the place of the skull. At Golgotha, the soldiers gave Jesus wine to drink. This wine was mixed with gall. He tasted the wine but refused to drink it. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross. They threw lots to decide who would get his clothes. The soldiers sat there and continued watching him. They put a sign above Jesus' head with the charge against him written on it. The sign read, This is the King of the Jews. Two robbers were nailed to crosses beside Jesus, one on the right and the other on the left. People walked by and insulted Jesus. They shook their heads, saying, you said you could destroy the temple and build it again in three days. So save yourself. Come down from that cross if you really are the Son of God. The leading priests, the teachers of the law, and the Jewish elders were also there. These men made fun of Jesus and said he saved other people, but he can't save himself. People say he is the King of Israel. If he is the King, then let him come down now from the cross, then we will believe in him. He trusts in God, so let God save him now, if God really wants him. He himself said, I am the Son of God, and in the same way, the robbers who were being killed on crosses beside Jesus also insulted him. At noon, the whole country became dark. This darkness lasted for three hours. About three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you left me alone? Some of the people standing there heard this. They said he is calling Elijah. Quickly, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled the sponge with vinegar and tied it to a stick. Then he used the stick to give the sponge to Jesus to drink from it. But the other said to him, Don't bother him. We want to see if Elijah will come to save him. Again, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Then he died. Then the curtain of the temple split into two pieces. The tear started at the top and tore all the way to the bottom. Also the earth shook and rocks broke apart. The graves opened and many of God's people who had died were raised from death. They came out of the graves after Jesus was raised from death. They went into the holy city and many people saw them. The army officer and the soldiers guarding Jesus saw this earthquake and everything else that happened. They were very frightened and said, he really was the Son of God. Many women were standing at a distance from the cross, watching. These were women who had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for him. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John were there. 
That evening a rich man named Joseph of Ad Joseph came to Jerusalem. He was a follower of Jesus from the town of Arimathea. Joseph went to Pilate and asked to have Jesus' body. Pilate gave orders for the soldiers to give it to Joseph. Then Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He put Jesus' body in a new tomb that he had cut in a wall of rock. He rolled a very large stone to block the entrance of the tomb. Now, so that's a fairly well-known story for anybody who's grown up in the church. But it's not an easy story to read. And certainly, when the more we hear about it, then sadly, the more it just becomes something that we almost feel like we know but we have got to remember right that Jesus didn't do this for fame he didn't do this for to prove a point he did it for you and me he did all this because we have sin in us now, one of the biggest problems I had growing up, I grew up in the church, and I had this problem growing up because, because I had the Bible a big influence in my life, then we were always encouraged to behave. In fact, no, we were. it was demanded of us to try our best to behave. And when I heard that Jesus died for sins, when I was young, I generally didn't really associate that with me because in my ignorance a sinner oh, a sinner were the worst people of society I mean like the two thieves on the cross either side of Jesus yes they were sinners people that break into houses and steal things oh yes they were sinners people who murder people who rob banks yes yes these were all sinners but growing up I, I didn't feel that I didn't understand that in fact I was a sinner the Bible tells us that the minute we're born, we have sin in us. And that sin keeps us away from God. Now we can try and be the best people in the world. We can do all we can. But if we're trying to look good in front of God, then realistically, it's the equivalent of imagine a pig Right? Now you think of a pig, dirty animals, very dirty. They they love to roll in the mud. And you think of a pig saying, looking at another pig and saying, he's dirtier than me. And that might be true. But imagine that same pig walking up to our wedding reception and walking to the door and saying, I want in, I'm very well dressed. And you could just imagine the person saying, no, you're not getting in here. Oh, but I'm better than him, pointing to his other pig friend. And there's an element of truth. Yeah, okay, he might not be as dirty as him. But to get into this wedding, you've got to be spotless. And this is something that we can never be of ourselves. We can never be spotless. Because when we think about sin, it's not just the big sins that keep us away from God. It's the we sins too. There's no such thing as big and we. All sin is sin, but what we may think of as we. So when I think about all the sins that I do, and when we think about all the things, not just that we do, but the things that we fail to do. Think of all the times you haven't helped somebody. In the eyes of the law of the land, it wasn't wrong. But that's a sin in God's eyes. When we don't read our Bibles, when we don't pray to him, when we don't praise him, he wants us to praise him. Right? When we don't show forgiveness, because he's shown forgiveness to us, and when we don't return that favour, we're sinning. So what we've got to think about is, Jesus did that for us. Now the pain, the physical pain of the cross must have been awful, more than I can ever imagine. 
But yet Jesus didn't complain about the physical pain. Jesus, when he cries out, was he felt the worst pain in that God had left him, God the Father. Because God had to pour out his whole wrath upon Jesus. Because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for us. And he did this so that we could be uh, presented sinless before God. It doesn't mean we are sinless, but we can be presented as guiltless. Maybe that's a better way. We are not sinless here in this world. But when we accept Jesus as our Saviour, then we are guiltless before God. Why? Because the blood that was shed on that cross for you and for me covers away all our sins. Now I want us to consider, there's a couple of things actually I want to look at before we leave the passage and go on to our singing. Right? Two things. You've probably all seen cartoons and even in films. Jesus carrying the cross and it's a full cross and it's on his shoulders and he can't and he falls over. That's not historically accurate. When it says couldn't carry the cross, first of all, you pro if you know your Bible story, then Jesus was beaten, beaten terribly. And this, ha this wasn't exclusive to Jesus. This was happening to every uh, person who was about to be crucified on a cross. They were beaten to within an inch of their life. Most of them actually died. The vast majority of them, believe it or not, died before they reached the cross. And they were given a plank of wood that they would be nailed to. So the bit that they were nailed to, so when we see the bit that goes across, okay? That bit is the bit that they would have carried. And what they did was the Roman emperors, the Roman Empire, sorry, got them to write the sin that was sending them to the cross, or the charge that was sending them to the cross. So the thieves, they might have had thief, murderer, they might have had causing a rebellion. They would have had that, and this was a this was a thing so that the crowd could basically boo them, maybe even do a whole worse things. But they would have to walk through it was the shame, it was saying, This is what I've done and this is what I'm gonna die for. Now Jesus didn't carry it, he couldn't. Why? Because Jesus was sinless. There was nothing on that except for the King of Kings. Because that's what he was. Now there's another thing I want us to look at. That's at the start. But at the end, it says something else. Right? It says that Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body and placed it in a tomb. This was very strange for the day. Because it was an accursed death. And the Jews would not have buried the people who were hung on a cross. Rather, they would have been dumped into just basically the, the rubbish pile. That's all they would have done. Their bodies would have been burnt. But what happens? God shows his absolute love here. Why? Because he had, Jesus had just gone through all this voluntarily. He had taken God's full wrath for you and me. And once he was, once he had the body had physically died, he was no longer under God's judgment. Look at what happens at the minute. God restores him. God doesn't let the punishment keep going. God puts him into a tomb. So this would have been a very strange thing for the onlookers, especially for the Roman soldiers, who would probably have seen this many a time. But this is a word of encouragement to us as well. If we're going through a difficult time, as many of us are now during this time of lockdown, we have to remember, yes, suffering does last, but it only lasts as long as God intends it to. He knows the end. And when it finishes, right, that is it. The suffering is done. God will restore us. But we've got to show faith in him. We've got to do our best to tell others about him. Because he is worthy of our praise and our honour. Right, we are going to sing the hymn now. And this is, there's power in the blood. 
and this the vocals you're going to hear is from word music ministry resources uh, they're on soundcloud i'll put a link in the description let's sing of the blood of jesus together there's power in the blood here we go would you be free from your burden of sin there's power in the blood power in the blood would you or evil a victory win there's wonderful power in the blood there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power wonder working power in the precious blood going to be quite a well, wee slightly complicated activity compared to the other ones we've done so you're going to need some things so before you start you're going to need a piece of a5 red card so that's quite specific i know red paper could work the uh, card would certainly be better a piece of a3 paper or card not red okay i'm just going to use white paper but you can use whatever you want but not red it really will not help you in this. You're going to need scissors, uh, sellotape, a black felt tip pen, not a big big chunky bold thing, but something that's fairly uh, fairly small pointed, and you're also going to need a writing pen. Okay, so those are the things. So before we continue, those are the things you're going to need. If you can only find A4 paper, then that's okay, but just if you've got a piece of red card, fold it in half and cut it in half if it's A5. So you're basically making it A6, okay? So if you wanted to use A4 paper or card for the main bit, then the wee piece of red card will need to be A6, okay? Right, so the first thing we're going to do here is take our piece of white paper. So this is in my A3 paper. You might be already able to see, I've kind of been practicing this. And what I want us to do is just fold it in half, okay? And then take our piece of card. Now this doesn't have to be too precise, okay? And we are gonna fold it, not too snug, 
Okay, not not perfect. But folded either way. So it's like so you can see that. So that kind of fits in. Okay. So that's what we want to do first. Now the next thing we're going to do is quite draw on this the shape of the cross. Okay? They're quite chunky. Don't have it too close to the edges, okay? But I do want it fairly chunky. Okay? So we're going to do that next. Okay, now there's my cross. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Mine's certainly not perfect. Okay, so now this is going to be the wee bit of an awkward one. Okay, to do. Because what we want to do is cut out the inside here. But we don't want to cut this all the way through. No, 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 no. So actually unfold it. And we just want to cut this bit out. All right. So if you want, you can ask your parents to use a craft knife for this. I don't want to encourage yourselves to use a knife. Please bear in mind if you are using a knife, please make sure you get a, either a cutting mat. Most people don't have cutting mats at home. So get an old magazine, one that's about to be thrown into the bin, and put it under it. I do not want to hear any parents complaining that their tables were ruined by a knife. Please don't. Okay, so if you are going to use a knife, use something underneath it. I'm going to use scissors. Now, easiest way to start is just fold it a wee touch like that. Okay, and that gives us just enough so that we can actually slip the scissors in. Now remember, we're not wanting to cut two pieces here, just one. Right, so that's me done. Okay, so I've got the cross. Now what I want you to do is take the cross and I want us to kind of trace around it, okay, through onto the back. So trace all the way around, okay, and take it through. So you're just using this almost like a stencil. Now, so when we open it up, so you can see there the cross, don't worry about that, right? So as long as they line up like this. Now, what I want us to do now, now, this will take you a wee while. Okay, so what I want is for you to write in here all the things that you can think of, all the bad things. Now I want this to be personalized to you, okay? So think of the things that you're going to say to God, I'm sorry for, I know they're wrong. Put them in here, in this cross. Okay, now this is where a writing pen will be better. I don't want you to use a felt tip for this purely because you won't get very much. Okay, so use a writing pen. Doesn't matter if it's blue, doesn't matter if it's uh, black, doesn't matter really what color it is at all. Okay, as long as it's clear. But I want this to be personal to you. Okay, I don't want you to think about every single bad thing that could possibly be in this world. Because, again, you know, that'll be like well, the way I was growing up. I wasn't a murderer. I wasn't a bank robber. I never acted those things. I'm not saying I hadn't thought about bad things against other people. I'm not saying I didn't think, mm, I want that in my head. But thanks by the grace of God that I didn't act those. So just think about all these things. So think about your jealousy, your unfriendliness, your greediness. Think about the times when somebody did something to you. And maybe you didn't fight. And I actually, I, I really applaud you for that. But did you think some really nasty evil thoughts? Did you think, I'll get you back later, or I hope something bad happens to you? Because remember, that's not loving, is it? So spend the next wee while filling out the cross with all the wrong things you've done. Now, 
That didn't take me long, and the sad truth is, I ran out of space. I had to stop. Now, I don't want you cramming in as much as you can, because I want you to be able to read this. Okay, so there is my list. It's not a list I'm proud of, but there's my list. Now, what I want us to do next, okay, there's a reason this is read. Think about the think about this the hymn we just sang. I'm gonna slide this in. What's happened to all those sins? They're gone. They are absolutely gone. And this is what Jesus does. His blood washed away my sins. Does it wash away everybody's sins? But the Bible says when we trust him as our Saviour, when we call upon him, and when we repent of our sins, his blood washes away. Now, that might look a wee bit just too medical for you right now, especially because we want this not just to remind you, but you can talk about it to somebody else. And what I want us to do then is, right, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Okay, he did that on the cross. So what I want us to put on here is paid in full. Okay. Okay, can you read that? Yes, I believe you can. Paid in full, because that's what Jesus did for us on that cross. He paid the price. Now, that means that no matter what we do, we can't cover over any of those sins. It has to be Jesus. Absolutely has got to be Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean, oh, okay, then I can live and be as bad as I want because the blood of Jesus paid for me in full. So, no, 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 no. James says something. He says in the book of James, he says, faith without works is dead. Now, that doesn't mean we work in order to get our salvation. We would not work to be saved, but rather it's a sign that we're saved when we do good works and we try and please God. We're not going to be perfect. None of us will be. But that's not an excuse for trying. Right? We've got to... That's not an excuse, sorry, for not trying. We've got to try and be the best we can be to serve God. Now, that is almost very plain. I think we could maybe do a bit more than this. Okay? But that's what I want to leave it up to you. Now, I'm not going to put any more worksheets on for this episode and the reason I'm being is so far guys one I got one email back showing the works okay I really would like to see some work even if you just you know just a comment to say yes I'm doing it I'm you know I, I'm enjoying it or not just say no I, I'm not really enjoying it that much give me some feedback just let me know you guys are seeing this okay now, one other last thing that I want you to do. Is on the back, you've got these kind of bits here. Just fold them down. Fold down the two corners. Okay. Now, with the, the reason I'm doing that is I want this to be freestanding. I don't particularly want this in a drawer. I want it standing. Okay. Now, you may think, hey, wait a minute, you said sellotape. And yes, I have sellotape. Okay. So what I want us to do with sellotape is, right, tape, first of all, tape these two triangles down, okay, and then run sellotape up and down the two sides, okay, I'll show you what I mean. So if you want to pre-cut, you want just two kind of small pieces. the other one to 
tape that down. Okay. Now, next thing, I want us to tape right along here. Okay. Don't tape along the top. Right. I don't want this in place because I still want you to be able to lift that up. Okay. So don't tape along the top, but tape along the sides. Of course, you can use split stick if you would rather. So that'll just keep them together. Now, as I said already, whoop, maybe I left this a wee bit too loose. As I said already, this is looking a wee bit clinical. There's nothing wrong with having it like this. You get the message out. However, let's see some decoration or something. I mean, you could just make it, well, we know Calvary was a, a hill. So make Calvary's Hill, so a wee bit of green underneath it, and then the sky behind it. You may want to put decoration around it. Anywhere at all, it's up to you. Okay, please guys, can I get some pictures, anything, <laughs> some feedback? Please give, please send it at kmcphail at yahoo.com. Okay, if you don't want your pictures put up on the website please see okay uh, so it might be a picture of your work you may say oh I don't want to be on myself that's fine just take a picture of your work and put it on okay so and remember when people ask right you can talk to them about that and see how the blood of Jesus covered their sins and that is the, one of the most important messages of Easter in fact, any time of the year. Right? Sadly, Easter has got lost in Easter eggs. Right? However, let us speak of the true meaning. So before we leave you, let's have a quick prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you sent your Son to die in this world for us. To take the punishment that we deserve. For no matter how good we try to be, we can never measure up to you, for you are a pure and holy God. Jesus died on the cross because there was no other way for us to be reunited with you. Sin had cast such a large divide that it was previously too much for us to make it across. But you provided Jesus to be that link. And we thank you for it. Help us, O Lord, to live the best we can be. We know we will not be perfect until we reach heaven. But that does not give us an excuse not to try and do things that are pleasing to you. Forgive us for all the wrong things that we do. Thank you for all the blessings you've given to us. For you give us so much. Hear us in our prayers, for Jesus' sake.